Welcome to Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. 2016 has been a difficult year politically, economically and for business. Terence Screamer joins me to review the year and look forward to 2017. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Are there any positives to take away from South Africa's economic and political performance in 2016? Well, as you said in your intro, I think a very difficult year. I think none of us in the business uh, environment have found it easy. I think uh, uh, it's for harder, you're doing more for less. And I think that has uh, had a negative impact, especially uh, in the political context. I think it has weighed down quite heavily on business in South Africa. I think the, the fight between the finance minister and the president and uh, some of the, the, uh, the developments around that have been very, very taxing on, on uh, the country and on the economy. And I think we saw that was highlighted and brought to the fore in the rating agencies, even though we weren't downgraded to junk, they highlighted this sort of toxic or poisonous political environment as a definite uh, weight on economic growth and development. So from an economic and business perspective, this has been a very taxing and tiring and trying year for everyone in South Africa. And uh, I think b what we can take away as, as some of the positives is I think on the political front, although there is there's this, uh, it's tumultuous and there are these you know, unknown factors and uncertainties in this environment. I think the, the greater assertiveness of civil society, now that comes with warts and all, I think the assertiveness we see amongst the students around Fees Must Fall, has, uh, there's difficulties around that and challenges. And I think we're gonna see a repeat of some of that in 2017. But I think we've also seen a, a, a more active and a more vibrant civil society. We've seen the emergence of the Save South Africa campaign, which has created an extra parliamentary oppositional force in society where people are still uncomfortable joining some of the opposition parties uh, formally. And then we've seen the, uh, the also the, the ANC stalwart standing up and the splits within the ANC becoming much more clear and apparent and I suppose, uh, you know, crudely put, you know, a sensible center of the ANC trying to regain ground against maybe uh, a predatory elite within that, which is you know, captured by this word state capture. And uh, I, think, so th I think that is a positive, you know, a much more vibrant civil society, a much more um, contested political space as we saw in the democratic, uh, the municipal elections, the ANC did far, fared far worse. Uh, now that comes with uh, you know, difficulties as well because governance is going to be hard in these very tightly contested councils and metropolitan areas. But it showed a maturing of our democracy, the fact that it was a peaceful transition, I think is a, gr a major positive. So on the civil society and the political front, I definitely think we, we've seen some building blocks or some foundations for maturing of democracy. And then of course we have to say that our, some of our institutions, while there was terrible backsliding um, in certain areas, National Prosecuting Authority uh, being one, uh, the Hawks also showing, seemed seem to be politically influenced being another. We definitely saw some of our institutions, our courts, our constitutional court making a very tough judgment on in Kandla. And uh, I suppose the public protector was the hero of the year in the form of Tuli Madansela. The only fear I have there is that it's also an institution that has to be, you know, kept up and uh, maintained at a high standard. And I felt some of the actions recently have been undermining of the institution of the public protector. And it's going to be interesting to see whether we, it can regain credibility. So yes, I think on the political and social front, in a very turbulent, difficult environment, there have been some positives. On a more micro level, the electricity sector has remained a big topic of conversation, despite the fact that there hasn't been load shedding. Uh, besides the politics, um, you know, electricity has been this big topic overhanging South Africa since 2008 when um, uh, we started with the load shedding. And I think it's, you know, th there was this crisis of supply for so many years and we still have that mentality of a crisis of supply. And actually we, we, we have seen a major change in terms of security of supply over the last year. We haven't had load shedding for this whole year, which is a major change, a major shift. But instead of it being a positive, in some ways it's, we've seen a, an emergence of a, a much more assertive state-owned utility uh, for good and bad. So I think assertiveness is quite good in things. It's showing its strength operationally. In some ways, financially, it's been able to 
uh, some way stabilized, but I think we saw with the latest S&P's uh, action showing that it's going deeper into junk, there's still a lot of concern around uh, around Eskim. And I think a lot of it relates to the politics of Eskim. I think a lot of the concern is that is Eskim doing the right thing uh, for itself as well as for the country? I definitely for, think for itself there's a, a big focus on you know, uh, reasserting itself as the dominant electricity supply industry participant, pushing back against the renewables, uh, going hammer and tongs for nuclear against a backdrop of, you know, um, one, um, a changing technology mix globally and a falling cost of prices of some of these renewables technologies in particular, as well as quite uncertain supply side growth. So uh, it's an interesting uh, area that we've come into and I think definitely um, the politics of the day, the split ANC, uh, th these schisms in society have definitely made their way into the, into the utility and they definitely seem to be taking s uh, a side and fighting a corner uh, in the sense and whether that's positive for Eskom in the long run and positive uh, uh, is, is unclear but it doesn't seem that positive for the electricity supply industry. This was really a time, a breathing space time where we could reimagine our electricity supply industry in, in the context of, a, of major changes happening globally around technologies um, and reimagine also the role of the state-owned utility. Um, what, it's, what its role going to be? What, it, what it, should its focus be? Should its focus be remaining dominant or should its focus be shifting towards ensuring the lowest cost electricity for South Africa uh, and you know, facilitating that role. So it seems to be a lack of imagination. It seems to be a retreat into the old camps. But uh, it's definitely going to be a topic that remains high on the agenda in South Africa. In many ways, the politics of the, of the country is reflected in that micro level in, in electricity. And I think a lot of the focus around this battle between renewables and nuclear is almost seen as what we see happening at the macro level between the predatory elite uh, and this uh, sensible center that I spoke about earlier. So yes, it's, it's been an interesting year. It should have been one where we were celebrating um, a supply side that has really stabilized, it seems. But instead, we have all these new risks. What do you see as the key threats and opportunities as we enter 2017? Well, the threats remain the politics and uh, this, this weight that it has on the economy. It's very hard for investors, private investors in particular, to look at uh, making long-term decisions when the politics is so uncertain, so tumultuous. And I think, unfortunately, while there's an opportunity now, given that commodity prices seem to be uh, turning in the right direction from our perspective, and there's an opportunity that really to, to start building again, a, a sort of a growth trajectory, um, given that we're coming off really a low base now, and I think we've probably seen the bottom. The, the 2017 threat is that the politics is going to continue to weigh heavily on, on South Africa across different sectors, and it's definitely probably going to have an impact, well, it will have an impact on investor confidence and business confidence generally, and I think unless we have, uh, see some signs of, of a transition, um, away from the current administration and accelerate the transition, I think that will, uh, that will weigh. Um, but I do think the opportunity is there, as I mentioned, with the commodities sort of climbing black back slowly from a, a serious slump, um, that we can start if the, some of the act actions that have been taken around uh, the CEO initiative and business and government working group trying to get things you know, trying to lean on our own resources rather than uh, rely very much on uh, what, what are really not great tailwinds out of the global economy, then I think that we can probably get to a higher level of, of potential growth. I mean, this growing below 1% is really no good for a country which has this triple scourge of unemployment, inequality, and you know, poverty. We just we we not going to address that with that that uh, that weighing uh, that very low level of growth. So we we need to get onto a new growth path. But unfortunately, I think the biggest risk to that growth path at the moment is our politics. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.